Most people are caught up in globalization. They see economic progress and modernization as the most important tools shaping international affairs. Yet when a revolution, political turmoil or a sudden event erupts, the appreciation of geography helps to put things into context. Prisoners of Geography by Tim Marshall is all about geopolitics. It describes how geography determines the limit of progress, cooperation and political behavior. By looking at the past, present and future, Marshall seeks to elevate the importance of geography within the interaction of nations, ideologies, civilizations, economies and militaries. So if you're puzzled with Putin's obsession over Ukraine or why Argentina invaded the Falkland Islands or why the Arab Spring started in Tunisia or even what makes the United States an exceptional superpower, the answers are all in this book. My name is Shirvan and welcome to a Caspian Report review for The Bookshelf. Marshall served as an editor of Sky News. He is also the founder of the what and the why.com, a news platform on global events. Marshall's experience in the geopolitical field is what allows him to make a complicated subject accessible and coherent. In his latest book, Prisoners of Geography, he breaks the world into 10 distinct regions spread over 10 chapters. The author takes the reader on a journey and covers nearly every major nation. And every chapter is rich in maps, essays and some even includes the author's personal travel experiences. There are plenty of anecdotes and the transition between the chapters is very smooth. Overall, the book is easy to read and understand. Marshall's unique writing style is a big plus and it's the primary reason why I'm recommending Prisoners of Geography in favor of other geopolitical books. The author's journey around the globe starts with Russia. He explains that the country suffers from two geographic weaknesses. First, the Russian heartland consists of flat terrain and extends all the way into western France. This kind of terrain encourages military invasions. It's this sense of insecurity that forces Moscow to take an assertive geopolitical stance against its western neighbors. In essence, the author argues that the more Moscow pushes west, the less vulnerable it gets because it anchors itself against geographic barriers such as the Baltic Sea and the Carpathian Mountains. Yet, the more Russia retreats east, the more fragile it gets. Russia's second geographic weakness, Marshall writes, is the lack of warm water ports with direct access to the oceans. Sevastopol in Crimea serves as the largest Russian warm water port. However, it doesn't have direct access to the oceans as it's restricted by the Turkish Straits. Yet Sevastopol remains the best port the Russians have and the fear of losing it is what propelled Russia to annex Crimea. The appreciation of geography enhances the impact of trade, sanctions, urbanization, military operations and more. In the case of Russia, it means that Crimea and eastern Ukraine are not enough for Putin. For Russia to feel secure, it must maximize its control over the North European plain. This means Moscow must find a way to anchor itself against the Carpathian Mountains in western Ukraine. Currently, there is somewhat of a stalemate in Ukraine, but Prisoners of Geography argues that the geopolitical needs of Russia mean that the conflict in Ukraine, the NATO presence in the Baltics, and the question over the missile defense shield in Poland are all far from over. As the author puts it, it doesn't matter if the ideology of those in control is Tsarist, Communist or crony capitalism, the ports still freeze and the North European plain is still flat. Prisoners of Geography has many admirable futures. In chapter 5, the author takes the reader to Africa. At least 54 countries consider the continent home. Yet Africa lacks navigable rivers and mild climates. It's also home to dozens of artificial states created by former colonial powers. Marshall argues that a continuation of tribal wars and ethnic conflicts is inevitable and the lack of authority is effectively turning Africa into a Chinese colony. The author applies the same principle to the Middle East. He articulately describes that as colonial influence diminishes, the geographic conditions are forcing the Sykes-Picot agreement to break apart.
Marshall also recounts the nature of the Arab-Israeli conflict, the failure of the Arab Spring and the growing extremism in the Middle East. He concludes, in impoverished societies with few accountable institutions, power rests with gangs disguised as militia and political parties. And while these gangs fight for power, many innocent people will continue to pay the price. But not everything is doom and gloom. For instance, the United States has the most fortunate territory on earth. As described in the book, it has vast fields of arable land and resources. It has more navigable rivers than any other country and lacks strong neighbors. It has access to and is secured by two massive oceans. Marshall isn't one of those commentators suggesting the collapse of America. In fact, what the author reveals is that the United States will remain a global power. By the end of the book, it becomes obvious that geography has shaped the destinies of many nations and will continue to do so. However, the author also concludes that new technologies will eventually surpass the geographic constraints. Factors such as climate change, the internet, exploration of space and the development of air power will eventually allow for humankind to master the earth. For now though, geography will remain the most decisive factor. Prisoners of Geography covers nearly all the major nations and is up to date with the current affairs. Yet, two things could have been improved. For one, most of the black and white maps are double paged and in between the intersection of the pages a portion of the maps are lost. In the European map, Sweden, Austria, Slovenia and Sicily were left out. Second, Australia and New Zealand are absent, which is unfortunate because this region's geopolitics would have fit perfectly in this book. Other than that, Prisoners of Geography is one of the most insightful and timely works on geopolitics to date. That being said, this book isn't meant for idealists, moralists or those who prefer to think solely about principle. Some of the author's conclusions are uncomfortable. Others make one despair of humanity's ability to ever live in peace. This book is all about realpolitik. As such, the reader must strive to be clear-headed, lucid and open to new ideas. The ultimate result is one of the finest books about geopolitics you could imagine. If you enjoy Caspian Report and you're looking for a pure geopolitical book, then Prisoners of Geography is definitely worth your time. This was a Caspian Report review for the bookshelf. Check out our playlist for more sources and book recommendations. Furthermore, I want to thank the following contributors on Patreon. Their support has made this report possible. And to learn more, see the link in the description. For now, thank you for watching and salut.